Howdy, AP Pregal. It is Ms. Kush. I am going to work through Mr. Passwater's notes from um, topic 1.7. So rational functions and in behavior. I have not looked at this yet, um, or at least not this year. A rational function is simply the quotient fraction of two polynomials. Um, a rational function f of x over g of x, where f of x and g of x are both polynomials, and g of x can't equal zero. Um, keep in mind, my favorite math joke of all times is that Chuck Norris can divide by zero. <laughs> you are not Chuck Norris, um, so you cannot divide by zero. Here are some examples. We have a, a constant over a linear, we have a quadratic over a linear, we have a quadratic over a cubic. All of those are rational functions. Okay, so we are going to talk about in behavior. So what we want to look at is we want to look at the, um, uh, basically all we care about when we're discussing in behavior is the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator and the leading coefficients. Okay, so in case one, they have the same degree. And when they have the same degree, we would just divide our leading coefficients and that becomes our asymptote. Okay, in case two, the denominator dominates the numerator. Um, they use that notation. But basically, the degree of the denominator is greater. Yes, the denominator, I call this bottom heavy. Um, so the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. If the denominator has a larger degree, if it's bottom heavy, then it's y equals zero. Okay, if the numerator dominates the denominator, okay, so the degree on the numerator is bigger than the degree on the denominator, this I would call top heavy, it has a little abbreviation. Um, and then, oh, I like how he wrote this out. Then, the, then has the end behavior of, the, it has the end behavior, oh, I haven't, I haven't used this idea before, I like this. Um, then it's either going to have a slant asymptote or a parabolic asymptote, or it just depends on how different these degrees are from each other. Um, but the point is, is that when we start dividing it, we have a over b, um, and then we end up with whatever we get when we, um, like if this were cubic, and that's linear. A cubic divided by a linear gives me a quadratic. Okay, 3 minus 1 is 2. Um, and so the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the, it has a slant um, asymptote. And I think that's kind of what we're focused on here. Um, determine... Uh, but I like this notation, and this lets you know um, if A and B are positive or negative, then it'll let you know if it's if it's got a, a positive slope or a negative slope. I kind of talked about that in my videos, but this is very concise. A little confusing maybe with the notation, but very concise. Okay, determine if the following rational functions have a horizontal asymptote, a slant asymptote, or neither. Okay, this is um, same degree, so it's um, divide the leading coefficients, and there's its horizontal asymptote. This one is bottom heavy. Um, the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. Its asymptote is y equals zero. This is top heavy, so it has a slant. Um, it's on an only one degree larger. Um, what does it say? If it's right, the equation in... Well, we will... I think later, I think it shows up in section 111, where we come up with the equation of this. So just for now, we know that it's going to have a slant asymptote. Um, you can do, well, a slant asymptote with a, a slope of two-fifths, which is kind of cool. Okay, the next one, same degree. So we have an asymptote 4 over 8 reduces to 1 over 2. So it's y equals, that's a horizontal asymptote. This is bottom heavy, y equals 0. This one is bottom heavy, y equals 0. Those are fun. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, so now let's do limit notation. Okay, so on this first one, we are the same degree, um, and so we have an asymptote of y equals 3. That's not 3. We have an asymptote of 1, 2 over 6 reduces to 1 over 3. I was just testing you. Did you catch my mistake? So from the left, okay, um, to describe the end behavior, as we go to the left, that's the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x, and it will equal that asymptote, 1 third. So it's getting closer and closer and closer to the asymptote as it goes farther that way. From the right, we have the, the limit as x goes to positive infinity of f of x, and that's also equal to that asymptote. The next one, we are bottom heavy, so the asymptote is y equals zero, so the limit as x goes to negative infinity of g of x is equal to zero. From the to, Going to the right, the limit as x goes to positive infinity of g of x is still equal to zero. Okay, the next one is uh, top heavy, so it's got a slant, notice it's four, it's a, 
it's a quartic divided by a cubic, which would give me a linear. So it's got a, um, a slant asymptote, slant, with a slope of negative three when you divide the leading coefficients. Um, and so that's gonna do something like this. Well, maybe not, maybe more steep, whatever. But the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, this is h of x, what is it doing? Well, it's going up to positive infinity. And the limit as x goes to positive infinity of h of x, what's it doing? It's going down. It's following that pattern, and so that's negative infinity. I think those are cool. Okay, um, say they give you the graph. What This appears to have an asymptote of 2. y equals 2 is our lovely little asymptote. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of, we'll call this k of x because k is our favorite letter. It is. Got it, everybody? Your favorite letter is K. What's happening? We go to 2. And the limit as X of X... <laughs> the limit... Let's try that again. The limit, of, the limit as X goes to infinity of K of X is equal to 2 also. Okay. On this one, this appears to have an asymptote of Y equals negative 1. We don't care what's happening in the middle when they talk about in behavior. So the limit, we'll call this one, we'll call this one J of X just to change it up. The limit as X goes to negative infinity of J of X will be equal to negative 1, the asymptote. Same idea here. The limit as X goes to positive infinity of J of X is equal to negative 1. Do, 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 do. Slant asymptotes. Oh, okay. Oh, we talked about this. Um, the slant asymptote is parallel to the line um, A over B. So we were just, basically, I don't really care what the y-intercept is at this point. We just were dividing our leading coefficients. So um, no matter what this plus, um, well, we would usually say mx plus b, but we are using, we're already using b. Let's use a k. So whatever this y-intercept is, it's still, um, this value may change, but you stay parallel to that. Um, okay. Which of the following has a slant asymptote that is parallel to the line 1 half x, y equals 1 half x? Well, we need something that is top heavy. So you are not top heavy. You are not top heavy. You are top heavy. You are top heavy, but your degree off is, is 2. So this is going to be a um, parabolic asymptote, which is kind of cool. So it's got to be this one. And let's make sure our leading coefficient is 1 over 2, and that's correct. Okay, so three only is correct. Those are fun. Okay, is that... That is the end of his um, 1.7 notes. So um, we'll see if I have time before I have to teach my next class and to do one, one eight. Like, subscribe, comment, come back, um, and find the other videos. Good luck to you. Go practice.